Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's afternoon Bible study and devotional. It is a beautiful day to be jumping into Job chapter 35. So I invite you to grab your Bibles and read along with me as we read through Job chapter 35. Elihu reminds Job of God's justice. Um, and as you're turning to that, I'd like to take a second to reflect on what we read yesterday in Job chapter 34. Um, so Job chapter 34, Elihu uh, accuses Job of arrogance. And um, I found it quite fascinating uh, and really kind of cool and neat how Elihu used Job's words to kind of like point out like, hey, you're convicting yourself here, bud. Here's what you've said. Here's how you did this. Um, and just kind of appealing to Job in that way. But he does so in such a way that it feels like Elihu is completely arrogant and ignorant to his arrogance and ignorance. The very thing that Elihu is accusing Job of. Um, so it's that, uh, you know, classic rap a uh, reminder to check yourself before you wreck yourself. And, um, you know, Elihu doesn't have that, that self-reflection kind of going on. Though a lot of what he had to say was on point. And there's a lot to learn from what Elihu um, has been talking about. And, like, he has some sweet Jesus things in everything that he's been talking about. So it is actually really, really cool. To see, uh, you know, Elihu um, kind of talk through this stuff, but there's, you know, we can learn good things and bad things, right? Just like how we can learn good and bad things from each other, because uh, none of us are really perfect. That's only Jesus Christ, right? So, with that, let's jump into Job chapter 35. Elihu reminds Job. Of God's justice. Then Elihu said, Do you think it is right for you to claim, I am righteous before God? For you also ask, What's in it for me? What's the use of living a righteous life? I will answer you, and all your friends too. Look up to the sky. And see the clouds high above you. If you sin, how does that affect God? Even if you sin again and again, what effect will it have on him? If you are good, this is some great gift to him. If you are good, is this some great gift to him? What could you possibly give him? No. Your sins affect only people like yourself, and your good deeds also affect only humans. People cry out when they are oppressed. They groan beneath their power of the mighty, yet they don't ask, where is God my creator? The one who gives songs in the night. Where is the one who makes us smarter than the animals and wiser than the birds of the sky? And when they cry out, does God not answer because of their pride? But is it wrong to say God doesn't listen to say that the Almighty isn't concerned? You say you can't see him, but he will bring justice if you will only wait. You say he does not respond to sinners with anger and is not greatly concerned about the wickedness. But you are talking nonsense, Job. You have spoken like a fool. May God add a blessing to uh, the reading of uh, Elihu, um, Elihu's words here in Job chapter 35. Um, so it's actually very interesting here because El I have one thing marked in my notes from the last time I read this. I don't remember when that was, but it says Job did. Yet they don't ask, where is God my creator? Job did. Go back. Job asked that. Um, and I get where 
uh, Elihu is coming from. It seems like if God is, you know, way above, how can what I do here have any sort of impact on him there? And what Elihu is missing out on is the fact that God loves you. He wants to dwell among you. He wants to intercede on your behalf. God is for you and he loves you. And when you love someone, what they do impacts you. Uh, I love my wife and what her actions do impact me. Even if she's, you know, on the other side of the planet, her actions still have an impact on me because we're connected through that love, through that compassion, through our relationship. And we have a real relationship with God. Why what we do here can impact him up there. God loves you. Your actions have an impact on that relationship. So are you going to choose you and your own path? Or are you going to choose God and his path? This is one of those things where I'm like, okay, Elihu, I think, I think you're wrong on this one. And it's not just your ego, which definitely still comes up a little bit. But uh, Elihu, I think you're, you're wrong on this one. What we do impacts so much more than just humans what we do impacts animals impacts the trees impacts the environment i mean i'm sitting in a giant empty parking lot where you can see all the trees and everything else that used to be around our actions have consequences on the literal world that is around us what you do and what you say and what you don't say and what you don't do have an impact Because God created us to have that authority. He created us masterfully and with a purpose. And he also gave us free will. And we can surrender that to God. Or we can take it up for ourselves and choose a path of destruction. Which hurts God, which hurts others, which hurts animals which hurts the very world around us. Elihu, what we do impacts much more than humans. And even if it were just impacting humans, we're impacting the ones that God loves. So are we going to do it positively or negatively? But ultimately, God So let's choose him because his ways are pretty good ways the best let us pray ajc awesome jesus christ thank you for all the ways that you love us you get bless all the ways that you love us you guide us you bless us you direct us lord lead us on temptation and forgive us our trespasses as you give us the strength and know how on how to forgive those who trespass against us Lord, help us to act justly, help us to love mercy, and help us to walk humbly with you. And help us to see how our actions can impact everyone around us, how they can have an impact on you, and how they can have an impact on every living thing around us. We are not alone in this body only having this impact, but this is a delicate dance of life that you have created. And you've given us authority and a pretty important role in this. And that our actions do impact something else and someone else along the chain. We see the how delicately you have created all of this, Lord. How intertwined you have made all of us. Something that Elihu could have never really understood. But thousands of years later... We can see that now, Lord. So help us to choose you in those daily moments where we can share your love and have an impact on you. You love us, you created us, and you want that relationship with us, and you want to dwell among us, Lord. So may we welcome you in daily, moment by moment. May you work through us for your glory and your honor. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. Have a fantastic rest of the day. And uh, yeah, God bless. Bye.